blanketed in a thick layer of snow, the true contours of this landscape are barely distinguishable. Plunged into a seemingly never-ending winter, the Chartreuse mountain range is truly barren. At the foot of these peaks stands a quiet and a mysterious fortress. It was here a thousand years ago that a group of monks came looking for a spiritual hideaway and set up the Chartreuse order. Today, 29 monks still live here, hidden away from the eyes of the world. The only place that's accessible to the public is the monastery's ancient outhouse, which is now a museum. The first thing a monk does when he comes in here is kneel like this, in front of the Virgin Mary. The living conditions here are rudimentary. For the heating, it's all very traditional. This is called a monk stove. He has to cut the wood himself, otherwise he won't keep warm. All luxury has been banished. The beds, for example, have no mattress. A monk has just one meal per day at noon, and he will eat facing the mountain. You have to understand that these men have chosen what might seem to us to be a particularly hard life, but it's one that makes them very happy. It's a life dedicated entirely to the Lord. These hermit monks don't just feed on prayer. Over the centuries, they've developed their own little tipple, Chartreuse liquor. It's a craft that earns them over 15 million euros each year, which is a blessing for the monastery's coffers. The whole process starts with a special delivery of these bags, which come straight from the monastery. Inside is a blend of 130 plants used to make the drink. We don't know anything about the recipe. We work like a cook who doesn't know the basis of the recipe. Everything's left to the imagination and it's best that way. Since 1605, only the monks have known the full intricacies of the recipe, with the Chartreuse order keeping it a closely guarded secret. This dramatic mountainside holds other surprises. After a one and a half hour climb, we're treated to a rare sight, an ibex clinging to an outcrop. We're going to try and make as little noise as possible. We'll try to edge our way slowly from the forest so that we don't disturb the animals because we're close to their wintering ground. This species had completely vanished from these slopes but was reintroduced back in 2010. It's a mountain range that holds lots of secrets, with lots of little pathways. It has wild spaces where nature isn't too disturbed and where you can get a bit lost. They have to be preserved. We head now to Saint-Christophe-la-Grotte. <laughs> Only the excitement of these young adventurers shatters the silence. In this region, the water has carved out a multitude of caves and rivers, which form a huge labyrinth. Now you know why we have hard hats, protective gear and gloves. You can really get to grips with the bowels of the mountain, with some crevices plunging to depths of 45 metres. It's impressive, there's just emptiness. There's a little lake which is really pretty with all the stalagmites and stalactites, and it's really a great thing to see. We often have the tendency to think, can I take a piece away with me? Well, no is the answer. You can take pictures with your eyes, take photographs and films and share them, but all this has to stay here. We often think that if you break something, it's worth something if you take it away, but the real value is here. We know that they're immense, majestic and sacred, but the Chartreuse Mountains haven't yet revealed all of their hidden gems.